Oh, I'm spirit. Hey, train, baby. And I'm feeling the spirit right now. <laughs> everyone this is divine and welcome to my channel if this is the first time you're visiting this channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications as well so that when I upload new videos you're the first to know now we have a lot to talk about today so let's get right into it Lloyd was one of the fastest rising stars in R&B during the mid to late 2000s known for hits like lay it down you get it shoddy as well as features like young money's hit single bedrock his distinctive falsetto and fresh feel-good sound made waves on the charts and my personal favorite is hit single you that sparked this great debate She's Did he say she's 5'2 or she's fine too? He has collaborated with other big names like Andre 3000, Lil Wayne, Ashanti, Ludacris, among others. After taking a break from music to focus on himself and other priorities, he returned to the music scene with a more vulnerable sound that spoke to his personal growth and trials. Now, Lloyd Polite Jr. was born on January the 3rd, 1986 in New Orleans, Louisiana. He was raised in the Calliope Projects in Central City until the age of two. When his father, Lloyd Polite Sr., was murdered, his mother, Robin Lewis Polite, decided to move him and his older sister, Brandy, to Decatur, Georgia, where he really started developing an interest in music and singing. In 1996, during a rehearsal for a show at his performing arts school, he was discovered by former frontwoman for all-girl band Climax, Joyce Irby. She recruited him as the first member for an r b group called Into, later adding Justin Clark, Everett Hall, and eventually Lloyd's younger brother, Chucky Reynolds. The group won a now canceled Nickelodeon show called Double Dare 2000 after going up against another boy band called No Authority, and they were signed to DreamWorks Records. The group released two singles, followed by their debut album, Toon Time, in 2000, which tanked partially due to the lack of promotion from their label, which was obviously not equipped to represent this up and coming R&B group. In 2001, the boy band officially disbanded. Now, during his mid to late teens, he started acting up, smoking marijuana, not attending his classes. He was selling marijuana as well, just getting into all kinds of shady dealings at a pretty young age. At the age of 17, he was caught selling marijuana, and at the time he had a firearm in his possession as well, which just made it worse. But because it was his first charge ever, he pretty much got off easy with just community service and a fine. I think after that, he managed to straighten himself out a little bit and shifted his focus back to his music career. He was determined to make it as a solo artist despite the group's failure. He continued to shop around for a record deal, eventually signing to Magic Johnson's label, MJM Records, distributed by MCA at the time, where he worked on the single Young Girl, but when MCA Records dissolved into its parent company, Geffen Records, many of its artists were let go, including Lloyd. He refused to give up, so using the demo he had created with MJM, he continued to shop around for a new deal, eventually landing a recording contract with record executive. Irv Gotti, who signed him to his label, The Inc., now known as Murder Inc., under Def Jam. In 2004, he released his debut album, Southside. Its first single, also called Southside, featured Ashanti, his label mate. Right off the bat, the track performed well on the charts, peaking at number 13 on the Billboard Hot R&B Songs chart and number 24 on Billboard Hot 100. The music video featured in the number one spot on BET. 106 and Park, but the album was soon considered to be a commercial failure. Its second single, Hey Young Girl, was not as successful as the debut single. Singer Sierra, one of his childhood friends, came out to support him by appearing in the music video along with other stars like Jermaine Dupri, Lil Scrappy, and Jazzy Faye, among others. Later that year, he was featured on Ja Rule's single, Caught Up, which had minor success nationally. He also appeared on Tango Red's Let's Cheat and Forever by 8 Ball and MJG. 
He didn't just focus on music, although it's his first love. In 2005, he played the role of A-Train, the boyfriend of the main character, Spirit, on the UPN show One on One. Oh, I'm Spirit. A-Train, babe. And I'm feeling the spirit right now. In 2007, he released his second album, Street Love, and its first single, You, featured rapper Lil Wayne, who at the time was becoming increasingly popular as a rapper. The hook interpolated Spandau Ballet's hit song, True. It was catchy and smooth, which really helped to draw the attention of listeners. In an interview with Vibe magazine, Lloyd gave some background on how he ended up releasing You as a single. It wasn't until Hurricane Katrina happened that I was forced to actually try and push the song out into the world. I was gonna hold on to it. However, after Katrina happened, my family was displaced and I was kind of strapped for cash. At the it got him a lot of radio play and with all the love fans were showing, the track went straight to number one on the Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart, making it Lloyd's first number one on this chart. And I've got to say that this one is still my favorite song by Lloyd to this day. The second single was Get It Shot In. While it didn't do as well as you, it still charted. The album was definitely a big improvement compared to his debut album. Dave Jeffries from All Music commented that the album shed Lloyd's thug image and replaced it with slow jams that came across as more convincing and sexy. Now, let's get real. In what world does Thug and Lloyd even go in the same sentence? So I'm gonna have to agree with that part. I think that's why the debut single from his album rep resonated with me so much because it had more of a sexy, feel-good vibe to it. But although it was a step up from his first album, he was also criticized for playing it safe and having an overabundance of generic, slow-paced ballads instead of trying something new, which may have given him more of an edge. All the same, Street Love emerged as Lloyd's highest rated album debut and is certified gold. The following year, he dropped Lessons in Love, which debuted at number seven on the Billboard 200 and number one on the top R&B hip hop songs chart. While it performed fairly well commercially and had some solid tracks, he was again criticized for playing it safe and not taking many risks with his style. The album concept was developed from a schoolboy fantasy of his. He explained that he imagined himself as a professor of a classroom full of gorgeous girls and he felt that the best thing he could offer them that was really worthwhile were lessons in love. 2009 saw him being featured on Young Money's hit single Bedrock which gave him a lot of publicity creating a well needed buzz around him as an artist. The same year he also released an EP called Like Me, the Young Goldie EP as a free download on the internet. Overall, I would say that the period from 2008 to 2011 was a career high for Lloyd with all his successful releases and features. In July 2009, after releasing three albums with Murder Inc., Lloyd decided to split from the label due to creative differences. He spoke a bit about it on The Breakfast Club. Check it out. Because after you left, you know, Murder Inc., and then you went and worked with 50, mm. that really did break his heart, and but, you could understand something like that. Yeah, no, and I said, I understand. Mm -hmm. Where, where he comes from. However, music should not have to have limitations. I never had real issues with anybody. You wasn't part of the whole No one ever came beef, at me. Right. No mm -hmm. one ever disrespected me. He never ever went out of his way to, to shit on me or, you know, that kind of thing. I like music. I make music. I want to make music with everybody. I don't want to have any limits on my life. Ever. He spent the rest of that year going into 2010 looking for a new label to call home. That was not as hard as it could have been because of the success he experienced after singing the hook on Lil Wayne and Young Money's hit track, Bedrock. That song may probably be what he was most famous for. He has quite a few hits on his hands, but that song really propelled him in terms of popularity and got his name out there more so than before. I think a lot of people expected Lloyd to join Young Money after the success of that single, and I really don't know if that was the initial intention. But in March 2010, after Lil Wayne ended up going to jail for weapons possession, it became clear that this was not the case because Lloyd went in another direction and signed to Zone 4, which is run by his longtime friend Palau Dadan and is distributed through Interscope. Speaking about what went down, he explained that he was in LA meeting with different labels at the time and Palau called him and requested that he come by his house. 
Love played him some music and he just felt inspired. And it reminded him why he wanted to make music in the first place, so he decided to sign with him. In 2010, Lloyd found himself in some legal trouble when he was sued by his former manager, Joyce Irby, for breach of contract. They reached a settlement where Lloyd was supposed to pay her over $100,000. He was also required to help her to find a new job. But according to documents filed in 2012, it seems that Lloyd did not honor that agreement and only paid out $20,000. I don't know if he was low on cash at the time. It could be a possibility because he has spoken before on experiencing periods like that especially knowing that he had to provide for his family he also made no effort to find her a new job so Irby sued him once more for the remaining $80,000 the job and also attorney's fees I'm guessing that has been squared away since there has been no word of any further lawsuits then in September 2010 Lloyd made the decision to cut off his signature long hair and he donated it to a charity for children with cancer he explained that it was supposed to be a reflection of his choice to make a change in his life going forward to rebuild and strip everything down so that he could work on himself so cutting off a big part of himself for someone else was a first step in making that change when he cut his hair it really triggered a lot of big changes in his life one such change being that he moved from Atlanta to LA he wanted to focus on trying not to look to other people for validation and to be more accountable for his own actions which is not easy to do because it is so much easier to look outside of ourselves at all of the factors and influences that are driving us down a dangerous path instead of seeing how we have contributed to it in 2011 he released king of heart his fourth studio album which debuted at number 10 on the u.s billboard 200 chart and its first single lay it down became lloyd's fourth top 10 hit after peaking at number seven on the US hot R&B hip hop songs chart. Recently, that song has seen renewed interest after being featured in a popular TikTok challenge. So a lot of the younger generation have now been exposed to it as well, and it's been getting a lot of love on that platform. The other release singles also charted, and this album was a success overall with Lloyd receiving positive reviews from critics about the quality of his performance. The third single from the album, entitled Dedication to My Ex, Miss That, is considered to be Lloyd's biggest international hit, peaking at number three on the Australia and UK charts. The song features Andre 3000 from Outkast and it was narrated by Lil Wayne. Now, not a lot of people can say that they have Andre 3000 featured on a song. That is a pretty short list of artists, so that in itself is an accomplishment. Now, the single didn't get much national recognition, but like I said, it was an international hit, so that's still a win for Lloyd. Then in October 2012, he dropped his first mixtape called The Playboy Diaries Volume 1 featuring Lil Wayne, August Alsina, Trey the truth among others at this point Lloyd kind of took a hiatus of sorts he did a few features but kind of went radio silent for a few years his social media accounts became relatively inactive and based on interviews he has done since then discussing this period in his life it was really a period of reflection for him and figuring out what he wanted for himself and the type of person he wanted to be he prioritized his family his health and his education the positive lifestyle changes he made even started to influence his family and he's proud of that accomplishment he explained that being from new orleans and growing up creole he was just used to eating all of the delicious local dishes but it wasn't always healthy he remembered experiencing a very scary moment when he learned that his cousin who is one of his best friends had developed diabetes in his early 20s so he decided to take control of his own life and take up the responsibility of helping his family to get their health on track as well his mom started making healthier meals including more vegetables and fruits and less processed foods he also committed to working out regularly at ucla's drake stadium even getting visits from other stars like sierra and diddy as well as palada don they all started working out together and while it was challenging he saw that it was working and even helped him to change his whole approach to music. It got him out of his comfort zone and into a more organic space. He started listening to music from other genres, old records and demos from other artists like Marvin Gaye, Miles Davis and John Coltrane. That's when he decided he needed a new talent. So he picked up the guitar and started to learn how to play. He played that guitar 
lovingly called Sylvia after his late grandmother every single day. During that time, he also toured with Lil Wayne, Trey Songz, and Diddy's Dirty Money crew, but he didn't seriously work on any album. He then decided to leave LA and move back to Atlanta. He explained that while living in LA, he was alone and really missing the people that matter the most in his life. Plus, he felt like it was a waste of money to be paying for two homes in separate places. Being back home meant that he could be more active in his family's daily life and didn't have to miss out on any important milestones like his sister's pregnancy, for instance. He was able to drive her to the hospital at the time, but he still ended up missing the birth of his niece because of work back in LA. He was heartbroken, but with the help of his mom, he quickly realized that he was just going to have to learn how to balance his career and his family, his two biggest priorities. He started going to therapy with his youngest brother who was suffering from clinical depression. And during those sessions, he learned how to communicate better and to identify his fears and then learn how to face them. He was inspired to start recording again with when a friend came to him for help with a track he was working on for another artist. He ran into producer Shakespeare while at the studio who's responsible for hits like TLC's No Scrubs and Destiny's Child's Bills, 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 among others. Based on that meeting, they started working together on a new song called True. The track addressed the loss of his unborn child from a previous relationship and also what he was going through during his hiatus. He had gone through such a transformation during that time and he felt like he didn't want to go back to making the usual turn up music. He wanted to turn to something more organic, real, and authentic to who he really was and to his experiences. So he decided to be more vulnerable and that's where True came from. He didn't want to abandon that just for a check or for popularity. Now word got out that he was creating music again and that led to a phone call with the founder of Empire Distribution, Ghazi Shami, who wanted to meet with him about his new music. Lloyd wasn't too sure if his new song would fit in on radio with what was currently popular, but he decided to make a deal with Empire that he would release one song and just see how it worked out. In 2016, he released a single True, followed by an announcement that he had signed a new distribution deal with Empire. The single has since gone platinum. He also dropped an EP titled True. That August, he debuted the music video, which was shot in East Atlanta with only a director, an assistant, and a Bluetooth speaker. Not quite like his usual big production. As of today, that video has almost 136 million views on YouTube and a lot of love and support from his fans. Two years later, he dropped his fifth studio album called True LP, not to be confused with his previously released EP. His second single, Caramel, was released that July, a month before the album dropped. The following year, he dropped a music video for Caramel, but this time the song featured the City Girls. Before releasing the video, he made a special announcement that fans could be featured as a lead in the music video. All they had to do was post a video online of themselves with the hashtag Caramel Lead or Camel Video and show him why he should choose them for the video. Hey, what up? It's Lloyd, and I'm getting ready to shoot a new video for my new song, Caramel. And I really, really want to make this one special. So if you would like to be the lead in the video, here's what you do. Film yourself, post the video online, use the hashtag Caramel Lead or hashtag Caramel Video and show me why I should choose you. Good luck and I hope to see you soon. From what I could see, he featured a few of his beautiful female fans throughout the video as a result of this little contest. On the album, he addressed some other trials he had faced in his life like depression, the loss of his baby sister when he was a child, which he had never addressed publicly before, his insecurities, and also anxiety. The track Lil Sis was about his baby sister who passed away when she was less than a year old back in 1993. He reflected on that loss later on as he was headed to the hospital with his own girlfriend as she delivered their son, and it made him extremely emotional. The title True obviously holds some type of importance to him because he has a single, an EP, and an LP with this title True. The album cover art also created a buzz as it featured Lloyd in the nude with just a strategically placed guitar covering his private parts out in the woods. It was unexpected, a bit risque, and received mixed reviews from fans. I would say his female fans mostly had no issues 
with it, while some of his male fans, or just males in general, who saw it, reacted a bit more negatively to him being so exposed. Lloyd explained that it wasn't about thirst trapping or anything like that. He saw his album cover as a form of liberation, much like the album itself was meant to be. This was his moment to open up emotionally and to be true to himself. Bearing himself on the cover was just meant to be a representation of his emotional and mental transformation, to show that he had nothing to hide. He later revealed that in the time leading to him making true, he went back to school and earned his GED certificate. While focusing on his music throughout the years, he had put his education on the back burner. So that was something that he had always regretted and he accomplished that goal finally. Lloyd announced in 2017 that his girlfriend, Dahia Abraham, had delivered a healthy baby boy who they named River that September. They later welcomed a daughter in late 2018. And in an interview with The Breakfast Club, he revealed that the birth of his son took a great emotional toll on him, more so than he ever imagined, especially as he reflected on the loss of his first child from a previous relationship. He later expressed in an interview with Madame Noir about how much fatherhood changed him for the better and humbled him far beyond anything else in his life. The experience has motivated him to work on himself more and become the best version of himself that he can. In March 2019, Lloyd joined a lineup of popular early 2000 artists for the Millennium Tour such as B2K, Mario, Pretty Ricky, Bobby V, Ying Yang Twins, and Chingy. He expressed that he felt a renewed energy while performing for fans nearly every night for three months and that the appreciation level was far beyond what it ever was before. He also stated that he felt a lot of love from other artists who were there with him throughout his career at times like Ashanti and Ja Rule who showed up for him while he was on tour. That same year, he appeared in the film The Bobby DeBarge Story, an original biopic by TV One. He played Gregory Williams, a founding member of 1970s band Switch, and a close friend of the DeBarge family. And just since the pandemic started last year, he announced that he would be collaborating with other popular army stars once more, like Pretty Ricky's Pleasure P, Bobby V, and hip hop group Do or Die to headline the first installment of the Drive-In Fest, which was held at the Soldier Field in Chicago. With the need for social distancing emerging during this time, they decided that driving movie venues would be a great place to hold events. So even in this current climate, he has been trying to figure out ways to keep his music out there. And he dropped a music video for one of his latest singles called Slow Wine Baseline, featuring Teddy Riley last year in May. And the vibe it's giving really hits the spot. It's a slow jam and is perfect for grinding on somebody's son in the club or wherever else you'd like. It samples Keith Sweat's hit single, Right and a Wrong Way, which Teddy Riley produced. And just nine months ago, he dropped a lyric video for They Don't Care, which is a single from Empire's compilation album called Voices for Change Volume 1. Empire explained that the goal of this project was to shine a light on the troubles faced by people of color around the world and to inspire listeners to positively impact their own community. The label announced that they will donate 100% of the album's proceeds to the American Civil Liberties Union, which is a nonprofit organization, in order to help advance racial justice, criminal justice reform, voting rights, and immigrants' rights. The album features artists like Mosey, PJ Morton, Trevor Jackson, D Smoke, among others, so you can check it out if you haven't already. But what do you guys think about it? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video. Also turn on your notifications so that whenever I post a new video, you're the first to know. Until next time.